بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير Let's do the exercises and in the exercises we see something here it says tamarinu uh, Now we can see that tamarinu does not have tanween uh, Does anyone remember like why there is no tanween onto that? Why is it not tamarinun and why is it tamarinu? Yes, any idea? Uh, we have learned that the nouns are, some of the nouns are diptotes, they are mamnum in a surf, and they do not accept tanween and ghair uh, munsarif. And we have learned like seven categories of that. And uh, now there are some patterns that we need to learn. So first we have learned about the categories like the names of the prophets and the names of the like uh, Arabic women and similarly we have learned like seven categories right and now we need to learn some patterns that if the word comes on that pattern that will be also diptot or it will be mamnu min sarf without tanween so tamarinu basically is on the pattern of mafailu how is it on the pattern of the mafailu for example first letter has fatha and fatha the second letter has fatha and also meme has fatha. Third one is alif and the sec uh, and the fourth one has to take kasra. Here it has kasra and here it also has kasra. The next one will be sakin. So ya is sakin and ya is sakin over here. And the last one takes dhamma or fatha. So it will be tamarinu and mafailu. So this is very important uh, pattern. It's used a lot in the Quran and you need to remember this. And that any noun that comes on the pattern of mafailu, it will be mamnu min sarf it will be diptot. Now let's begin the exercise, iqra, waktub, read and write. As we know that in this lesson we are learning about uh, mosuf and sifa, the noun and the adjective. And we know that noun and adjective, mosuf and sifa, are equal in four properties of the noun. You remember 4D analysis of the noun? C, G and S. What is C, G, and S? Capacity, gender, number, and status. So we know that the noun must be equal in four properties when we talk about masuf and sifa, when we talk about noun and adjective. And the first one is Muhammadun, uh, Muhammadun Talibun Qadimun. So why do we say Muhammadun Talibun Qadimun? Because we know that Muhammadun is subject and Talibun is predicate. And this is noun, and the adjective that we use for noun is qadimun. Uh, so this is the adjective. And we can see the talibun is singular, qadimun is singular. Similarly, it's masculine, it's masculine. And similarly, uh, we can see that this is uh, marfu, and qadimun is also marfu, and both of them are nakira. Okay, why talibun, qadimun are marfu? What's the reason uh, for them to be marfu, and why? Uh, Muhammadun is marfur. Yes, does anyone remember? Very basic information, something that we learned from lesson number one. Muhammadun is marfur because it is subject and subject is always marfur. And talibun is predicate, is khabarun, mubtadaun wa khabarun, and we know that khabarun is also, is always marfur as well. Okay. And then we have the next one. Adhalika rajulu, mudarrisun jadidun. Is that man a new teacher adhalika uh, rajulu as we can see that adhalika is ishara and arrajulu is musharun ilayhi it means that man right that man so it will be the subject a uh, is used to ask a question hamzatul istifham adhalika rajulu and then uh, the predicate is the khabar is mudarrisun jadidun is that man a new teacher as we can see over here the answer is la huwa he is tabibun jadidun. Uh, no, he is a new doctor. So very simple sentences. Hua will be subject and tabibun will be the predicate. And this is noun and uh, uh, the sifa of tabibun is jadidun. The adjective is he is new. Hada darsun sahalun. This is an easy lesson. Again, uh, the is subject and darsan is predicate. This is mosuf and this is sifa, noun adjective. Abbasun tajirun shahirun. Abbas is a famous merchant. 
So these are very simple sentences. And inshallah, once you get to know how to make these sentences, and then based on the same pattern, you can make several sentences. Now it's all about practice, right? So similarly, we have Bilalun, uh, Mohandesun, Kabirun. Uh, Bilalun is a big, uh, you know, like uh, engineer. And then we say al inkliziyatu Lughatun Sa'batun. English is a difficult language. al inkliziyatu as we know that English, it has Tabarbuta, it's feminine. And that's why the Khabar is also feminine. Um, so if, uh, the noun is Lughatun. And the noun is feminine, and that's why the adjective that we use for the noun is also feminine. So both of them have to be feminine. As we know that uh, the mosuf and sifa, the noun and adjective, are equal in four capacities, uh, four properties of the noun, uh, C, G, and S, capacity, gender, number, and status. Anta rajulun ghaniyun. Are you a rich man? And the subject and Rajalun Ghaniyun will be predicate. La, no. Ana Rajalun Fakirun. I am a poor man. Ana subject, Rajalun predicate. Fahua Masuf. Fakirun. Fahia Sifa. So now we can see that Ana is a subject and Rajalun is predicate, and the adjective that we use for Rajalun is Fakirun. I am a poor man. Al-Qahiratu, Al-Qahiratu, Madinatun Kabiratun. Now we can see that uh, Madinatun, the noun is feminine. That's why the adjective has to be feminine as well. So we say Al-Qahiratu, Madinatun Kabiratun. Anta, Mudarisun Qadimun. Are you a, are you an old teacher? Um, and he says La, Ana Mudarisun Jadidun. No, I am a new teacher. So we have learned about anta means you for singular masculine and ana means I for both uh, singular masculine and fem feminine. Uh, ana is used for both singular masculine and feminine. Like in English, we say I. And if there is a person when there is masculine, he says I. And if there is feminine, she also says I. Similarly, in Arabic, we say I. Ana mudarrisun jadidun. I am a new teacher. <clears throat> okay, if the person, the teacher is feminine, then we will say, Aanti mudarrisatun jadidatun, kadimatun. Aanti mudarrisatun kadimatun. Are you a, uh, are you an old teacher? And she says, La, ana mudarrisatun jadidatun. I am a new teacher. <clears throat> okay, now we have here, a uh, Hamidun Talibun. What will be the ending of Kaslan? Yes, please, quickly. The ending of Kaslan. A uh, Hamidun, excellent. It's a dip toad, so we will put Dhamma or, onto that. A uh, Hamidun Talibun Kaslanu, excellent. Uh, is Hamid a lazy student? So this is where we need to be a little bit careful. Uh, we are used to Tanween, Rajalun Ghaniyun, wa Madinatun Kabiratun. And all of a sudden we find that we don't see Tanween on the second noun. Uh, we might be thinking like how they are equal in four properties of the noun. How they are equal in the four properties of the noun? Uh, because we can see that they are both uh, uh, indefinite nouns and they are both masculine and they are both uh, singular and they are both marfur. How they are marfur? This is marfu with Dhamma. Uh, sorry, with Tanween, and this is Marfu with Dhamma. Why it has Tanween? Because it accepts Tanween. There is no reason why it should not accept a Tanween. But Kaslanu does not have Tanween because we know it's a diptot. It is a noun that ends with Alif and Noon. And a noun that ends with Alif and Noon uh, that is Mamnoom and Asarf. And this is basically noun. And in the category of noun, uh, we will say that this is an adjective. Please remember that. Uh, whether it is a noun or adjective or pronoun, uh, or or we can say a noun, yes, adjective and pronoun, and they all fall into the category of noun. We all they all fall into the category of noun. What if there is a, there is a question? What if there is a female uh, female uh, noun for Kaslanu? So for the female for Kaslanu, inshallah, we will learn in the coming lesson, it is Kasla. And Kasla is also Mamnoom in a surf. 
it's not kaslanatun uh, so it's a different pattern so it will also be mamnu min as-sarf as we can see over here kasla la huwa talibun jadidun uh, no he is a new student okay excellent so exercise number 1 is finished uh, now we move on to exercise number 2 Dar means put and this is fail al amr this is command and the ending is sakin whenever we make a command the ending of the verb is always sakin Dar fil faraghi what will be the ending of faragh it will be majroor because of fi fil faraghi fil jumalil jumalil atiyati in the following sentence sentences na'tan munasiban um, suitable adjective now uh, please remember that uh, in arabic there are two schools of thought we have kufiyin wa basriyin okay so some of them they use it as uh, sifatun and some of them they use it as na'tun both of them have the same meaning uh, generally in the subcontinent like in india pakistan bangladesh and these countries sri lanka um, we use the word sifatun and in in africa and the middle east uh, they use the word na'tun that means adjective both of them have the same meaning now the sheikh himself studied from al qahira from egypt um, so that's why he uses the word na'at and we know that na'tun na'tan and na'tin uh, whereas generally we use the word sifatun both of them have the same meaning whether you call it na'tun or sifatun uh, they have the same meaning in the beginning of the lesson i did not want to introduce this to you because it might be slightly confusing and the terminology will be a lot uh, but now inshallah with the passage of time you can see uh, that it has two names it has the name is na'tun wa sifatun and the meaning is the same adjective khadijatu please remember that khadija will not take take the mean it will be khadijatu and we will say khadijatu talibatun mujtahidatun you can put any now uh, any adjective over there uh, yeah i have the adjectives over here like mujtahidatun jadidatun uh, jamilatun you can add any adjective uh, I have these adjectives for you, but it's not necessary that we have to use these adjectives. We can use any of the adjectives. And the only thing that we have to make sure that uh, noun and adjective are equal in number, gender. Uh, uh, they are equal in capacity, number, gender, and status. Khalidun, Tajirun. And now Khalid, we know that it's a masculine. So the adjective that we need to use has to be masculine as well. So we say Khalidun, Tajirun. Uh, ghaniyun, excellent, uh, shahirun, perfect, um, you know, so ghaniyun means rich, rich and shahirun means famous, excellent. Al-Arabiyatu, Al-Arabiyatu, Lughatun, yes, what do you say about Arabic language? Sahlatun, excellent, so we say Al-Arabiyatu, Lughatun, Sahlatun, Arabic is an easy language. Al-Asfuru, Ta'irun, Sparrow, Ta'irun, uh, we can say Jamilun, Saghirun, right? Uh, sparrow is a beautiful animal, uh, sorry, bird, and sparrow, we can also say, is a small bird. Ta'irun, sagirun. At-tufahu, fakihatun, ladidatun. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Uh, the apple is uh, a tasty fruit. Uh, so we can see here that fakihatun is noun and ladidatun is adjective, and they are equal in the four properties of the noun. Ana mudarrisun. I am ana mudarrisun jadidun aw qadimun yes ana mudarrisun qadimun I am uh, an old teacher but if you start your career as a new teacher then you can say ana mudarrisun jadidun Muhammadun tabibun uh, shahirun excellent Muhammad is a famous uh, doctor al inglesiyatu lughatun we have seen just uh, a while ago that sa'batun excellent arif uh, in Arab, English is a difficult language and this is not like any kind of like um, bias it's just like just to learn the Arabic language so we are saying English language we are saying just for the sake of learning a language we are saying that uh, English is uh, a difficult language for those who don't know but if we know it's easy jadidun Mujtahidun, excellent. Are you a new student? Al Qahiratu, Madinatun. Qahira is a uh, beautiful city. So Al Qahiratu, Madinatun, Jamilatun. Uh, Qahira is a beautiful, Cairo is a beautiful city. Okay, that again, 
that means that means put the fil makani al khali in the spaces or in the blanks fil jumal jumal is the plural of jumlatun jumlatun is singular and jumalu jumal is plural it's not jamal please be careful jamal is camel as we know uh, this is jumal uh, fil jumal al atiyati in the following sentences man'utan munasiban uh, suitable adjective okay man'utan munasiban they are also uh, noun and adjective right so man'utan is it means adjective but here it's a noun and munasiban is adjective suitable adjective al arabiyatu yes again similar to that al arabiyatu lughatun lughatun sahlatun arabic uh, is an easy language ana qadimun ana tajirun qadimun ana talibun qadimun ana mudarrisun qadimun um, so we have here ana mudarrisun qadimun i am a, a, an old teacher now uh, why we have to say mudarrisun and qadimun uh, we know that we are discussing about uh, al masuf wa sifa noun and adjective and we know that noun and adjective are equal in the four properties of the noun i'm sorry to say it again and again but i want you to get used to it because this is only in uh, book 1 so inshallah when we do book 2 and 3 uh, then there is no need to repeat it again and again ammarun um, tajirun ghaniyun excellent ammar is a rich merchant and then we have hada maksurun Uh, something is broken so we can say hada qalamun maksurun hada maktabun maksurun hada zujajun maksurun anything that is broken hada jawalun maksurun this is a broken mobile phone now uh, the more you have the vocabulary the more you can make the sentences faisalun kaslanu faisalun talibun kaslanu so again we can see over here uh, that kaslanu is lazy and it is a dipdot it is mamnu min as-sarf excellent iqra now we have to read and we know that uh, uh, we have learned it several times and we have i have put it here again just for your uh, for the sake of reminder and learning that adjective that adjectives that end with alif and nun uh, they don't accept the mean that means they are mamnu min as-sarf or they are dipdot Uh, the same goes with the noun the noun that ends with alif and nun uh, they are also mamnu min as-sarf like imranu sulaymanu uh, uthmanu they are also mamnu min as-sarf now we have uh, uh, here little bit more information kaslanu uh, means lazy jawanu means hungry atashanu means thirsty ghadbanu means angry and malanu means full Now we can see that all of them end with alif nun alif nun and that's why all of them are mamnu min as-sarf so you say ana jaw'anu what do you say ana jaw'anu i'm sure yeah it's over there so you say ana jaw'anu i am what's the meaning of jaw'anu do you remember i'm hungry accident a anta jaw'anu are you hungry he says la ana أطشانو. No, I am thirsty. Okay. لماذا المدرس غضبان واليوم؟ Why is the teacher angry today? Uh, could be some something from the students. Generally, they make the teacher angry. Maybe they didn't do the homework. So لماذا المدرس غضبان واليوم؟ Why is the teacher angry today? Uh, اليوم. Uh, we will discuss about this a little bit more about it. Al-yawma means today. When it comes with fatha, it means today. And let's complete this here. Al-kubu mal'anu. Al-kubu mal'anu. The cup is full. Excellent. The cup is full. So as we can see over here, jaw'anu, atashanu, ghadbanu, and mal'anu, they are all mamnu min as-sarf. They are dipped They don't accept the mean because these are adjectives and they end with alif noon. Now I was talking about uh, uh, al yoma, so please uh, see over here carefully. Al yoma with fatha it means today. Al yomu with dhamma it means the day. The day we started our classes. So we say the day we started our classes, and you say today is uh, Sunday. So 
Al-Yawm al yawm al ahadu Today is Sunday, right? So, and Yawmun means our day. Yawmun means our day. Um, now, if you look at the example from the Quran, we have this. al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum. al yawm and if you look at the translation, it says, today I have perfected your religion for you. So al yawm means today. al yawm means that day. And Yawmun means a day. So this is information that is a little bit extra. And this is something we need to know. We might not find it in the books, but inshallah, we can benefit from each other's knowledge. And I thought that it's worth sharing it so that you can note it down. And inshallah, when you use it next time, you are not confused. Al kalimatu al jadidatu, the new words. Okay. Now, what kind of construction is this? Al kalimatu al jadidatu. What kind of phrase is this? We have learned four phrases. Please tell me quickly what phrase is this? Is this jar majroor? Is this jar majroor? It's not because there is no uh, there is no harf jar. Okay. Is this idafa mudah mudafile? No, it's not mudah mudafile. Is this ishara wa musharan ilay? It's not. What is this? It is masuf wa sifa, man'ut wa na'at. Excellent. How do we know it's masuf and sifa? Because they are equal in uh, four properties of the noun. How they are equal in the four properties of the noun? Here we have al-kalimatu and here we have al-jadidatu. Al-jadidatu is feminine. What about al-kalimatu? Is this feminine? Excellent. So al-kalimatu is the plural of kalimatun. So kalimatun is feminine and al-kalimatu is also feminine and al-jadidatu is feminine and they are equal now. You can see that they are equal in four properties. Al, al, definite noun, uh, feminine, feminine, similarly marfu, marfu. And then we can see that they are singular in uh, number. They are singular. Please don't take them as plural. They are singular because uh, we can see, or if you say plural, uh, then this is also considered as plural. So we can say it in either way. Alogatu means uh, language. Uh, Atairu, bird. Jawanu, hungry. Ghadbanu, angry. Shahirun, famous. Al Yawmu. Yes, please. What's the meaning of Al Yawmu? Quickly. Al Yawmu. Does it mean um, today? The day. Okay. It means the day. What if I put Fatha over there? Al Yawma. What does it mean? Al Yawma. Al Yawma means today. Excellent. And what if I remove Al and put the mean Yawmun? What does that mean? Yawmun. Ade, excellent, excellent. I'm so happy. Uh, then we have Kaslanu, uh, sorry, Atashanu, that means thirsty. Al Usfuru, bird. Al Madinatu uh, means city. And then we have Kaslanu, uh, means as we have learned, it means lazy. And then we have Malanu, it means full. Okay, now as you know that whenever we go to the end of the lesson, we cannot end it without looking at the examples from the Quran. And now look at some of the examples of adjective phrases, al masuva sifa from the Quran. Uh, so here we have uh, uh, Surah Al-Ghashiyah. And uh, um, as, as we know that, inshallah, I'm sure all of us know about it. Uh, as it starts, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. How does it start? Hal ataka Hadith Al-Ghashiyah. Hadith Al-Ghashiyah, we can see that it is idafa, mudah mudafaleh. Wujuhi yawma idhin khashiyah. And then after that, we have the sifa uh, that has been used for the faces. What kind of faces are those? Working hard and exhausted. Uh, so we can see over here, uh, um, they end with tamarbuta. So both of them are feminine. Both of them are singular. Both of them are nakira. And both of them are marfur. In the same verse of the Quran, the same surah of the Quran, the next verse, it says, Tasla naran hamiyatan. Now we can see here it is hamiyatun, it is amilatun wa nasibatun. And here we have naran hamiyatan. We know that in Arabic, uh, nar is feminine, right? You remember? Nar is feminine. That's why the adjective that is used in the Quran for nar is also feminine. Now these are the small details that you really need to focus on. Uh, we have discussed all of them. And... Uh, so we can see over here, so, so Naran, as we know that uh, if you are analyzing, you will see that Nar is feminine 
and similarly the adjective that is used for nar is also feminine now one might be thinking that there is no tamar buta so how it is feminine and we have discussed that um, the word nar in arabic is feminine then we have tusqa min aynin aniyatin now we can see that aynin is majrur and aniyatin is also majrur and why they are majrur because of Harfijar min. So we have subhanallah three verses of the Quran and we have three exam uh, three examples. Amilatun nasibatun marfu narun hamiatan mansub and ainin aniyatin is majrur. Also, please remember that ain means an eye, and also ain means spring. Spring and both of them in Arabic are feminine, fountain or spring. So whether you call it uh, whether you use it in the context of sp spring, it will be feminine. Or whether you use it in the context of the eye, it will also be feminine. In the Quran, it is used as spring. Uh, they will be given drink from a boiling spring. Min aynin aniyatin. Then we have uh, one more example from the Quran. Hada shayun ajibun. So we can see here that shayun ajibun, and this is an amazing or thing or strange thing. So hada is subject and shayun and ajibun uh, is masuf and sifa which is predicate. And then we have ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيد Again, we can see ذَلِكَ is subject and رَجْعٌ is uh, noun and بَعِيدٌ is sifa. Uh, that is a distant return. As we can see, distance, distant in English. We have adjective first and then we have noun. But in Arabic, we have noun first and then we have adjective. Now, alhamdulillah, um, you can see that after completing eight lessons, we are in lesson number nine and alhamdulillah we are able to analyze the verses of the Quran. Uh, similarly, if you remember uh, that uh, uh, the plural of ghayru aqil, the plural of ghayru aqil, we know it is considered as singular feminine. Now, for example, sarirun in Arabic is masculine. But if you talk about the plural, which is sururun, it will be feminine, right? Why it will be feminine? Because it is the broken plural, or this is ghayru aqil, and we know that ghayru aqil is always feminine. Kubun is a cup, and the plural is akwabun, so kubun is masculine, and akwabun is feminine. Similarly, we have namruqatun, it is feminine, and the plural will also remain as feminine. But look at the pattern, it is namariku. Namariku, in the beginning of the lesson, I told you that a word that comes on the pattern of mafailu, is mamnu min sarf I gave you two very, very important patterns, mafailu and mafailu. If you are able to memorize these two patterns, your understanding of the Arabic will increase a lot. So we have namariku, it is on the pattern of mafailu. Both of them are feminine. Why they are feminine? It ends with tamar buta. And why it is feminine? Because it is the plural of ghayru aqil. And then we have zirbun, which is a carpet, which is masculine. And zarabiyu is carpets and it is feminine. Why it is feminine? Because it is the plural of ghayru aqil. Now inshallah, four more verses of the Quran uh, we have from the same surah. And now we can see over here, fiha sururum marfu'atun. When I'm, um, I, I'm just for the sake of example, I'm not stopping. So I will say fiha sururun marfu'atun. Now we can see that sururun, is it masculine or feminine? Please tell me quickly, sururun. Sururun is masculine or feminine? It's feminine. Why is it feminine? Because it is the plural of ghayru aqil. So because uh, it's a noun and we know that masuf, if masuf is feminine, and then the sifa has to be feminine as well. And we know that this is feminine because it has ta marbuta. So it is fiha sururun marfu'ah. So when you stop on this, then this ta marbuta changes into ha. It becomes fi, uh, and then it becomes normal ha. So it becomes fi ha sururum marfu'ah. Wa akwabum mawdu'ah. Again, we have akwabun, which is the plural of kubun. So this is feminine. And this is marfu and mawdu'atun uh, is feminine. And it is also marfu. Why I am only uh, focusing on feminine, on the gender? Because that's the only thing that we need to focus on. The rest we know that they are marfu, they are singular, and also uh, they are indefinite. Now the four, the third example you can see over here. Wa namariku masfufa. Now we can see that namariku 
is mamnu min as sarf is ma what mamnu min as sarf why it is because it's on the pattern of mafailu but it is we know it's the plural of ghairu aqil so this is feminine and also masfufatun is also feminine and zarabi you uh, mabthutha we have seen that uh, zarabi uh, sorry zarabi you is the plural of zirabun so we can see that this is also plural of ghairu aqil so this is feminine and the adjective that we have for this is also feminine and and now we can see here that uh, namariqu is on the pattern of mafailu and zarabiyu is on the pattern of mafailu this is little bit difficult to understand you might be thinking like how it is uh, mafailu uh, basically you know that in arabic if two letters are the same or for example if ya happens to be there twice if ya occurs twice then the rule of the arabic language is that when two letters are the same you merge them into one letter and then on top of that you put a tashdeed so it becomes zarabiyu it is on the pattern of mafailu in the hadars our lesson is finished subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh